and let me know that you can hear and that you can see. Good morning, good morning, welcome. Trying something new this morning, so just let me know that you're on and that I can, that you can hear me okay. Good morning, welcome to the Rise and Shine devotional this morning. Robin Smiley here with Come Up Higher Ministries. So glad you guys have joined us. Good morning, Yvette. Hey, good morning. Yes, it is Pentecost Sunday. Thank you for that reminder. God is good. God is good. Good morning. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, you'll see I'm trying something new here today. And um, so y'all just bear with me as we go through it. <clears throat> Great, good. I'm glad you can hear me. Hey, good morning, Jay. Good morning. And so um, let's, let's just pray. Father, we just bless your holy name. We magnify you, we extol you, and we lift you up, God. We thank you that you are God all by yourself. We thank you, Lord God, that, that, that it is in you we live, move, and have our being. We thank you, Father, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper, Lord God, and every tongue that will rise against us in judgment, we render it powerless in the name of Jesus. So, Lord God, we just thank you for just being with us this morning for this Pentecost Sunday, God. We thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit. We just say anoint us afresh on today. Holy Spirit, we welcome you here in this time of study of your word. So, God, thank you for the teacher who is present. Thank you for the one who will um, give us a direction and give us understanding on today. In Jesus name, we pray. Amen and amen. All right. So this morning, our devotional is titled Change Your Mind. Change your mind, right? And so God wants us to remember that we have a new mind, that our minds are changed, that our minds are different. And so we'll jump right in and just see what he has to say on today is Sunday. You guys know I don't like to keep you too long. And this one is a real short devotional today. And it says, today, put an end to the shallow, polluted threats of danger and doom that want to harass you. Remember, I've given you a new mind to know and live in the truth. He says, remember, I've given you a new mind to live in the truth. He says, remember, I've given you a purified, brilliant mind, and this makes you smarter than the world. I've made you so smart that when my thoughts of truth, blessing, and empowerment enter you, they rejuvenate every cell of your being, and you become seriously happy. Right. So I've titled this again. I've titled this change your mind. Why? Because the first thing it says is today put an end to the shallow, polluted threats of danger and doom that want to harass you. So we can even say with everything that's going on that that the enemy wants us to fear. The enemy wants our mind to get polluted and, and start to think, oh my God, am I next? Oh my God, is my husband, is my brother, is my son? You know, all these negative thoughts, but God is reminding us that he has given us a new mind, that our mind is pure, that our mind has been renewed, right? When we accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, we truly became a new creature. And God is reminding us of that, that our, to maintain our newness, which I think we talked about a few days ago, is we have to keep our mind pure. We have to keep our thoughts pure. And the way we do that is by meditating on the word of God. So we have just a couple of scriptures today. The first one comes from Psalm 19, verse 8. And, it, and I'm using the King James Version. And it says, the statutes of the Lord are right. Rejoicing the heart, the commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes, right? The statutes of the Lord are right. What are the statutes of the Lord? They're the word of God. The statutes of the Lord are the 66 books of the Bible. And, and this scripture reminds us that there is no error in what is written there. 
The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. So when we read them, when we digest them, it brings joy to our heart. It brings joy to our spirit. It says the commandment of the Lord is pure. It's not tainted. There's there's um, nothing foul about it. It's pure and it enlightens the eyes. So when your eyes are enlightened, right? What does that mean? That means you can see. That means you can see more clearly, right? And so um, God is saying to us that, remember, your mind is new. Hey, good morning, Kathy and Miss Roxy. He's saying, remember, your mind is new and I need you to keep your thoughts pure, right? Think on these things, Philippians 4 and 8, those things which are lovely and pure and of a good report. He's saying to think on those things and, and to remember that his statutes are pure. His word is pure. And so whenever the enemy comes in to try to cause us to have a polluted mind, he's saying, just reflect back on my word, reflect back on the things that I have written and spoken to you. And remember that my word is pure. Amen. And so our next scripture today comes from Romans 12, and 21 Romans 12 and 21 again we we just have a couple of scriptures today and it says do not be overcome by evil but overcome evil with good do not be overcome by evil but overcome evil with good so think about that right think about just what has happened within the past 72 hours right George Floyd was murdered and as a result, the people have begun to protest. But instead of remaining peaceful, they're trying to overcome evil with evil, right? But God says, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. So what does that mean for us as believers? How are we supposed to respond when evil comes? We are not to do the tit for tat. We are not to, to try to hurt someone because they've hurt us, but instead we are to seek the statutes of God, which are pure. Instead, we are to go to his word and ask him to cleanse us and purge our conscience of dead works, right? When we meditate on the word of God, it rejoices our heart. It gives us a sense of hope. And God is reminding us that no matter what is going on, that we are we have a new mind. We have a new mindset. And if we find ourselves falling short, if we find ourselves starting to think evil thoughts and, and things that aren't pure, he's saying, and just go back and renew your mind, right? Romans 12, one and two, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And so we have the tool, the Bible itself, 66 books worth to keep our mind pure. He is saying, change your mind. What is it that you need to change your mind about today? What is it that the enemy has been polluting your mind about? Maybe it's, it's something, you know, like you feel like I just can't lose this weight or maybe Maybe it's like, you know, you feel like, when am I going to get ahead financially? It seems like, um, you know, I, um, my money is coming and, and leaving as soon as I get it. Whatever the enemy is polluting your mind with, God is saying, remember, you have the mind of Christ. Remember, my statutes are pure. Remember that my word says exactly who you are and will show you how you can apply it and make the change in your life that you are seeking, right? So today, God is saying, change your mind. What happens to us Remember, guys, all starts in our mind. It starts with a decision. We choose what, what is going to happen ultimately, right? Because we, we choose what thoughts we allow in our mind. We choose how long to meditate on them. We, we choose to um, allow them to control how we will respond. But remember, because it simply starts with a decision, you can do what? Choose death or you can choose life, right? Because when the thought comes, when we meditate on it, it's gonna get down in our heart. And when it gets down in our heart, eventually something is gonna come out of our mouth. So that's why God is reminding us today. It says today, right? Not tomorrow, not this evening, not next week, but today, meaning right now, put an end 
to the shallow polluted threats of danger and doom that want to harass you. I tell you this pandemic that um, we're experiencing has created a lot of, of thoughts of, of danger, a lot of thoughts of doom and gloom, right? But God is faithful. He has reminded us, even when we just stop and think from the moment this thing started up until now, where he has kept us, he has provided us, he has protected us. And we have to remember that despite what we see going on in the world, he hasn't changed. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever more. And so we just have to do our part and take every thought captive that is in disobedience to Christ and cause it to come into alignment with the word of God. And when we do that, he says, we will be happy, right? He ends the devotional saying that um, I've made you so smart that when my thoughts of, of, of truth blessing and empowerment into you. They rejuvenate every cell of your being and you become seriously happy. God is saying he doesn't want us to slip down into a place of depression. When we get his word down in us, it's a rejuvenation even to ourselves, even to our mental capacity. And he is saying, meditate on these things. Think on these things which are pure. Change your mind today. Change your thoughts. Change your focus. Amen. Yes, um, Yvette, 1 Corinthians 10, 3 and 6. Take 3 through 6. Take every thought captive. We have to imprison those thoughts that are trying to imprison us, right? When something is captive, it's been imprisoned. So we have to take them captive and um, uh, cause them to align with the word of God, right? Yes, 2 Corinthians 10 verses three through six. And so when we do that, we are telling the enemy, look, you don't have the authority. I am changing my mind. You get you don't have control over my mind. I, I am using the authority that God has given me. I'm going to take every thought captive. I'm going to pull it down. Right. Because it says those things that are in high places. Right. The 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 um, enemy lives in, in the in the second heaven. Right. He's there and he's he's roaming around looking to see whom he may devour. And he's looking for someone who whose thought life and thought patterns, he can come in and convince, you know, that, that things are going to be doom and gloom for them. But God is saying, no, you are a new creature. Change your mind. Remember, your mind has been renewed because you have accepted me as Lord and Savior. And there is no reason for you to be concerned with doom and gloom, because that's not who I am. And if that's not who I am, that's not who you are. Why? Because you are created in the very image of God. So today, he says, today, whatever you're doing today, put an end to the shallow, polluted threats of danger and doom that want to harass you. And somebody may be saying, well, how can I do that, Robin? You see everything that's happened. You see everything that's going on. How can I not um, have those types of thoughts? How can I not become angry? How can I not want to... Um, you know, lash out and say different things. God is saying the way to do that is to continue to meditate on my word. When we stay in his word, he helps us to keep our mind pure. He helps us to keep our mind renewed. That is the way that we do it. He's not saying, you know, to act like things aren't going on. He's not saying to deny what you see, but he's saying because greater is he on that's on the inside of us than he that is in the world. We don't have to fear. We don't have to be consumed with those threats. We just have to tap into the greater one that is on the inside of us. And when we tap into the greater one, the Holy Spirit himself, he will show us how to respond. He will give us what we need to say. He will tell us how to act and, and all of that. He will even show us how to protest if, if that's what we're called to do. If we're called to be out there and stand and hold up a sign and protest the Holy Spirit. When we do it led by the Holy Spirit, we will do it in peace. And we will overcome evil with good. Amen. We will overcome evil with good. So we just bless the Lord for this devotional today. Yes, it was a short one, <clears throat> but sometimes, <clears throat> excuse me, sometimes 
And that's what, what all it takes. <clears throat> it, it just takes a couple of scriptures and a, and a short devotional for God to say, look, this is where we are today. This is what <clears throat> I need you to focus on. I need you to keep your mind pure. I need you to keep your thoughts pure. How do you do that? You have to protect your gates. You have to protect your eye gates. You have to protect your ear gates. Why am I saying gates? Because gates are a point of access. When you go through a gate, you open, right? It's a, it's a door that is open. You have to protect what you are opening yourself up to. That's why I tell you guys all the time, yes, you we need to be informed, but don't inundate yourself and sit there and watch CNN all day long. Don't listen to things. You know, don't allow your friends to say, girl, did you hear? Did you see? No, you've got to remove yourself. You've got to protect your ear gates and your eye gates because eventually you're going to start meditating on those things and, and mulling over them and negative emotions can come up and trigger things in you that are not like God. So God is saying, again, change your mind. Change your mind. Amen. Change your mind, not tomorrow, but today. Change your mind. Don't say, oh, I'm going to put my Christianity to the side today because I got I to gotta give somebody a piece of my mind. Stop giving people a piece of your mind. That's the problem right there. You're giving a piece of your mind so much that you, you don't even have the right mind anymore. You need to change your mind and keep your mind stayed on him, right? He says, he whose mind is stayed on me, he'll do what? Keep in perfect peace. Isaiah 26 and 3, he whose mind is stayed on me, I will keep them in perfect peace. So when there's chaos going on all around you, when rubber bullets are being shot, when tear gas is being put into the atmosphere, where should your mind be? Your mind needs to go back to the father himself. He says, I will keep you in perfect peace. Amen. And so change your mind today. Today, put an end to the shallow, polluted threats of danger and doom that want to harass you. Those of you who are um, have unfortunately had to be uh, laid off or, or not working right now, don't worry about that. The fact that you aren't working, don't don't allow the thought of my credit score is about to drop. Don't allow that to to manifest in your mind. God says, "I've got you. I've got you. I knew you would be in this position before you were even formed in your mother's womb." And allow me to to cover you. Trust me. Be sure that I am going to protect you. Right? I am going to provide for you. He's saying, don't allow the threat of doom and gloom to consume you, but be consumed with my word. Today is Pentecost Sunday, right? We're celebrating Pentecost. What happened at Pentecost? The Holy Spirit came in like fire. It changed the, even the way they spoke. They spoke in unknown tongues. Call upon the fire of the Holy Spirit. Call upon the consuming fire to purge your mind of every dead thought, to purge your mind of dead works, right? And, and allow the fire of the Holy Spirit to renew you and, 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 and renew your mind. You have to decree and declare, right? Why? Because we are priests and kings in this earth. Royalty makes declarations. Royalty makes decrees. So whatever you're speaking out of your mouth, you need to decree it. You need to declare it daily right? <clears throat> but you can only do that when your mind is pure, when you're thinking right thoughts, right? When you're thinking the word of God. So again, God is saying, change your mind, change your mind. Whatever has gotten you kind of feeling like, mm, I, I, I can't take this anymore. Whatever has, has gotten you in that dark place, God is saying to change your mind mind because he's with you and his statutes are pure. His word never changes. It's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So Father, we just bless your holy name, God. <clears throat> we thank you that you are God. We thank you, God, that there is none like you in all the earth, God. We thank you, God, for just being God all by yourself. We thank you, Lord, for um, allowing us just to understand the importance of our mind, for allowing us to see, Lord God, that 
when we when we meditate on your word, when we allow your word to consume our mind, then we can have the right response to whatever situation is going on. Lord, you said that we are to think on those things which are pure and lovely and of a good report. So help us, Lord God, <clears throat> to keep our attention on you. You said when our mind is stayed on you, you will keep us in perfect peace. And we thank you, Lord God, for the peace of today. We release your peace into the very atmosphere right now, Lord God, into every city that has gone up um, in an uproar with these protests. We release your, your peace even now. And we decree and declare that there shall be a ceasing and a desisting of all evil works, Lord God, that the people will come together peacefully to, to um, let their voice be known, heard, God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for this day of Pentecost. I release the fire of the Holy Spirit into every household now, Lord God. Let your fire fall upon every household to purify everything that is not of you, God. Let your fire fall, Lord God, like cloven tongues upon your people, Lord God, that as we begin to pray, as we worship you, Lord God, there will be a tangible encounter with you on today, this day of Pentecost, God, that we celebrate. We bless your holy name, God, for the power of the Holy Spirit who even lives on the inside of us today, God. We ignite the power within us, God, and we thank you, Lord God, that we go forth in power and in boldness to speak and declare your word in Jesus' name. That same power, Lord God, I release it upon every pastor, upon every minister that will be sharing the gospel on today. Let them have a divine encounter with you, God. Let their messages go forth with such power and healing and deliverance, God, that those who are watching on the screen will, will sense the very presence of God. Let the fire of God fall from each live on today, Lord God, that your people will be renewed, that, that those who need salvation will, will respond immediately because of the fire of the Holy Ghost. Lord, we thank you for this day of Pentecost. We thank you for the, the, the fire falling upon our praise and worship teams and, and our choirs and, and those the, that'll be singing and ushering the, the people into a place of worship. We thank you even for just the music that may be played in the background, that the choice of songs will be chosen because of the Holy Spirit. God, we thank you for this day of Pentecost that we can celebrate the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord God, and that you will fill us afresh. We ask that you would fill us afresh with your power and do us again, Lord God, with the power of the Holy Spirit. Let us have a new fresh encounter with you on today that we will carry forward in the name of Jesus. Lord, we just bless you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and Amen. And so you guys know that I like to um, always end the, the broadcast with offering salvation to someone. If you are listening for the first time and you have not given your life to Christ, I want to encourage you to make that decision today. Change your mind. Maybe you have said, I don't need to do that. Why do I need to do that? So-and-so go to church every Sunday, but they live in, you know, nothing good is happening for them. Change your mind and allow God to... <clears throat> to penetrate your thoughts. And God is saying today, all you have to do is say, Lord God, I am a sinner and I need to be saved. Come into my life as Lord and Savior. I believe that Jesus was your son, that he died on the cross, was buried and is resurrected. If you said that simple prayer, guess what? You received the greatest gift of all, the gift of salvation, the gift of eternal life. And God is, is ready to receive you into the kingdom of God. All you need to do is find yourself a local church <clears throat> where you can continue to grow. I put on the screen there, if you made that decision, you can simply email me at info at robinsmiley.com and I will be more than happy to help you find a church home or you can type decision in the um, comments. And as I go back through them, 
you'll be able to, I'll be able to reach out to you. Also just want to share with you the ways to give real quick. If you want to sow into Come Up Higher Ministries, we have several ways you can give via Cash App and our hashtag is dollar sign for Come Up Higher. You can also go to uh, Facebook, which is another easy way to, to give our Come Up Higher Ministries page, the blue contact us button. You can also um, go to our website, robinsonally.com and go to the contact page and there's a spot there for you to donate. We also are with Givelify. You can just go to Come Up Higher Ministries there on Givelify and um, give your donation there as well as PayPal, paypal.me slash come up higher. And then lastly, if you still like to mail in a check, we have a PO box, post office box 31, Sheltonham, Maryland 20772. So again, God bless you all. Today he is saying to us, remember to change your mind. You can take control over your mind. You can take control over your thoughts and, and know that God is with you. God is, is you know, he's not leaving it all up to you, but he's given us 66 books to follow in the name of Jesus. So again, God bless you all. And if you're tuning in for the first time, um, we tried something new here with the streaming and I, I hope it was beneficial and, and, and clear and all of that for you guys. Um, but you can join us every day, Monday through Friday at 6 a.m. Saturday and Sunday at 7.30. So you guys have an awesome Sunday. Be sure to tune in to your local church. Don't forget to send in your tithes and offerings to still be a blessing. Um, the finances are still needed just to even do things like this. These things aren't free. And so um, your churches still need your, your financial support. So again, I pray that this was just a little nugget, a little uh, school of the word for you before you um, join your own service today. And you guys have an awesome and blessed Sunday. And I'll see you tomorrow at 6 a.m. All right. Bye-bye.